A newly declared independent candidate for London Mayor is hoping to kick Sadiq Khan to the curb with plans to ban cars in favour of the B word, bikes. I don't think he and I are going to see exactly eye to eye. Um, but mayoral candidate Rehan Hack joins me now. Rehan, uh, welcome to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. Thanks for having me. Um, very brave of you to come in here because if you want to have like car free Sundays, I don't think you and I are going to agree about any of that. But let's talk about how you got here, talk about um, why you want to run against Sadiq Khan and uh, what moved you, I suppose, away from the Labour Party because that's where you were, I think, before you decided to become an independent. So I know it's rather a long question, but um, tell us your story. Yes, so thank you so much for having me. Not at all. Mike. So London is in real crisis. People being priced out of this city. Mm. We have a soaring crime epidemic and staggering inequality. And we are woefully unprepared for the AI revolution. And I believe the political status quo is failing. And we need a new kind of mayor in this city. Someone who's a genuine independent that works for people and not some vested interest. Someone who's got big ideas and bold ambition to take London into the future. And someone who's got a proven ability to work across the political divide to get things done. And that's why I'm running. OK. And what do you think London's biggest problem is then? So I think the biggest problem in London right now is the housing crisis and the crime epidemic. So on the housing crisis, the city is hollowing out. You know, I was based in Paris for the last two and a half years, and the soul and character of that area is now changing because young people cannot settle and live in that part of town. And we're seeing it in places like Hackney as well. People can't settle. So schools are now closing and public sector workers are now leaving London. And I think the city is genuinely hollowing out. And in 10 years, unless we get on top of this, We'll see a completely different city. Mm. Yeah, I think London is a very, very unrecognisable city. I was born and raised in London. I used to, I used to live in North London and I live in South East London. Um, it's a very different place. It's still got some great things going on. It's still got a fantastic, um, you know, vibrancy to it. But I have to say, one of the things that for me has changed the way that London is, is the kind of the change in the way that um, transport is done. You're talking about, you know, wanting to have more, you know, car-free Sundays and more bike use. But I mean, bike use is crippling parts of London as well because there's nowhere to park. Parking is incredibly expensive. Driving a car in London is incredibly expensive. A lot of people need to drive for work. A lot of them need to drive to get into work, to bring whatever it is they do for a living with them. So, I mean, it's, are you one of those people who wants to punish car drivers? No, I don't want to punish car drivers. And the Car Free Sundays proposal um, is not my top priority, but it is inspired by what I've seen yeah. in Paris. In Paris, around 15% of daily journeys take place on a bike, and they have a goal to make the city 100% bikeable by 2026. And I genuinely believe that active travel is a good thing. So they want to ban cars from Paris, is what you're saying? No, so what happens is that the first Sunday of each month in Paris, the mm. central arrondissements, the first four arrondissements, um, basically just shut down for about 10 to 6 p.m. And that's just on the first Sunday of each yeah. month. And it just gives the city a chance to breathe and people to take over the streets, just to walk with their families, dogs, their cyclists and runners. But what if you want to go somewhere? Of course, in yes. In a car, what happens? You, well, you can't do it everywhere, and that's why it's just... Uh, but what if you live in a place where you can't drive? So, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I want to see this all across no, the No, but what are they going to do in Paris? So what if you live in a street where you can't drive between 10 and 6 on a Sunday? Well, there are certain kind of exceptions for, for example, people who are disabled or the emergency... Yeah, but what if you're not disabled, go... you just want to go somewhere? Of course, but obviously for that period, you can't. So that's you can't? Point. So you want to stop people from actually travelling in their own neighbourhood? Um, only in certain parts of town. Like, uh, yeah, but you shouldn't be doing yeah. it at all, should you? But no, I think I think it's actually important to give our city a chance to breathe and get more people actively travelling around the city. So let me give an example. Around the mall uh, at the weekend, it's all shut off. Yeah. And people take it over and people love it. There's nothing there, though. There's just tourists there. Yeah, and so... Nobody I, lives there. So that's what I'm saying. I, I would kind of, you know, have this policy... So you wouldn't do it, for example, in a place where people lived? No, no. I mean, it would mainly be in the kind of when you say mainly. busy city parts of town. So anyone who's travelling in and around London during the Christmas period would know how congested the pavements were and how difficult it was to go about shopping yeah. and enjoying Christmas in London. So, you know, if we shut down some of the streets, it would have been a lot more enjoyable for people to, to have their... But the problem is, is what if, you are wor if you're working, right, and you're having to get access to areas where you have to work and you have to take your van there or your car there or taxi drivers have to go there... It's a bit of an un it's a bit sort of it sounds a little bit too pie in the sky for me. I think you might be twenty years ahead of your time. I don't think it's pie in the sky because I mean it's been proven to work and it's very popular in Where does it work? Paris. As I mentioned in Paris and I saw well, it. Lots of things are very popular in Paris that we don't do here. Yes, I but don't I, get into that, though. I think this is a good thing, and it is getting more people active and looking at different ways of traveling the city. And it's only a one day a month thing, and it's only between ten and six pm. So I don't think it's too radical and it's well, yeah, but, giving people Well, you say that, but actually an awful lot of London is now no longer accessible to cars because streets have been closed off, 
bike lanes have been put in place of, of actual car lanes, bus lanes have been put in place. There are some streets where you can't drive anymore, where you used to be able to drive. You know, it's already quite a limited world if you're a car driver in the city. I, I don't accept that. I mean, I, obviously... Well, it's true. Whether what? you accept it or not, I'm afraid it's true. Well, no, I mean, you can get around on a car uh, pretty easily still. In you can get around in a car, but it costs some people 25 quid a day. And that's pricing a lot of people out of being able to work here. And you say you're worried about people leaving London. A lot of people have stopped coming into London because they can't afford it. So, like I said, I'm not seeking to kind of wage war on motorists here. And this Sounds is like just it. something that will happen it does on sound Sunday like... in a very quiet time of the week and in the central parts of town. And I just think it's a really good opportunity for people to enjoy a different form of travel. Mm, interesting. Well, um, it's good to meet you. Um, Thank you. I'd like to get you back on uh, when we have something else to talk about. OK. Um, and we'll see how we get along. Um, we didn't really quite find out about your views on Sadiq Khan, but what are your views on Sadiq Khan? So I think he's a good man, but I don't think he served London well. We have a housing crisis, we have a crime epidemic, inequality... Well, he's been in charge for quite a long time, so is it not his fault? No, I, so I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he's doing a good enough job, and that's why I'm running to, to replace him. And I also think it's more than that. I think the political status quo in London has failed, and we need a new type of mayor. What sort of mayor would you be? I would be a genuine independent that doesn't serve big money or big... Would you get rid politics. of some of the ridiculous amounts of money that he spends? I mean, would you, for example, get rid of the nighttime czar, who's on about 120,000 a year, the bike czar, who's on about 98,000 a year? Would you get rid of them? So I would burn some of the departments in City Hall. I mean, he saves some money for us. So, I mean, he's got about 10 deputy mayors now. Mm. And by law, he only needs one. Right. And so I would actually have just one statutory deputy mayor. I mean, you've got President Biden, who runs the most powerful country in, in the world, and he only has one deputy. So I would only have one deputy. Uh, the Knights are, I've never really understood this position, and the best champion for the nighttime economy, I think, is the mayor. So that would be something I take on myself. Mm. OK. Well, I mean, as far as the way that uh, the voting system works, is it going to be different this time because people are going to be able to vote in a different way? Yes, so it's a kind of straight shootout. They mm. move to the first-past-the-post yeah. system and... Because it used to be more proportional representation, didn't it? That's correct, yes. So and... how's that going to affect it? How's that going to change? How's that going to make your chances better? Well, I'm under no illusions. What I'm seeking to do is a Herculean task. It's like uh, climbing up a mountain. Uh, but I genuinely feel London needs better options than the red and the blue pill. This ain't the matrix. And I'm in this race because I want to give Londoners a real opportunity for change. And I think I'm the candidate for that. OK. Well, as I say, good to see you. And, and we'll have you back another time. Thank, Thank you so you much. very much indeed.